Yep, here I am, mid strip down. Uh, it's easier to remove the carburetors when you take the float uh, bowl stuff off. And uh, the, hmm, what do you call them? The chambers on the top. I can't think what you call them, where the pistons go. Anyway, uh, so that's done. Uh, I've disconnected the uh, starting carburetor polyp. Uh, my next job is to disconnect the throttle linkage, then disconnect the uh, link between the two carburetors. Uh, remove the spring over the back there. Uh, then unbolt these babies. Now, something I have a concern about or a question about is the um, paces, spacers, not paces, spacers between the inlet manifold and the carburetor. Now, as you can see, I do have a spacer there, but it's a very thin one. And I know some cars have thick ones. I must admit I'd rather not have a thick one there because that pushes the carburetor further out. Uh, and then that means my air filters may foul again. And I'd really not want to go around that road or even down that road. Uh, the other thing I have discovered, I was getting coolant on my exhaust. Uh, yeah, these buggers are leaking. I tell you what, this, this uh, Evans coolant, great. But by God, does it find the leaks. Woo! So uh, I've got to tighten them up a bit more. Um, the problem is the valve, um, where it connects to the heater box there. It's not the hose clamps that's the problem. It's the connection to the heater box. And I must admit it does look a little wet on top there it's definitely wet underneath no it's not wet on top that's that's just uh, me doing a shiny thing but underneath probably won't do it now well there you go you can see it on my finger it's shiny shiny so I'm gonna tighten that up or I'm gonna have to take it off and reseal it with some more gasket goo Wow never rains but it pours okay uh let me now get the carburetors off i'm building up a uh, collection on the bench oh let me try and show you and here is the collection i'm building up front carburetor rear carburetor trying to keep them the same you should always do that uh, so this bench won't be disturbed until the car comes back or at least until the carburetors are rebuilt that's probably nearer the truth okay on to the next thing right this is the fourth attempt to add audio to this clip keep your fingers crossed and your toes and everything else um what you're seeing is a view of the underside of the intake manifold. And yes, coolant goes through the intake manifold. There are leaks, definitely. Um, it's hard to see, I know, but there are leaks, uh, small drips, uh, Boy, I've got to tell you, I'm getting really pissed off with this piece of crappy software. Suddenly decides it's going to go to mute and I lose the audio I've recorded. I'm just trying to show you guys here the um, 
marks where the coolant has leaked down. Hopefully, I'll be able to cure them all. The head is good and tight, good and tight. Um, and now all I got to do is crank up the um, intake manifold and hopefully prevent the leaks. You've probably just missed it, but there is a leak. And is it going up to, oh, you just saw the stain there right above the start. There it is right there. See it? See it on that, oh, just below that nut. Yeah, like me, just below the nuts. All right, on to the next bit. Okay, um, the sound on this video was fucked up, so I'm having to uh, do it uh, manually, manually, separate. Anyway, uh, these two caps, they're different. Do note that the front cap and the rear cap are different. They are different part numbers, and you need to make sure you get the right one in the right place at the right time, because if you don't, you will struggle to get the fuel lines connected. Yeah, it's one of those bitches, but there you go. I'm sure you can figure it out. Uh, they are both different part numbers, and if you're really desperate, I'll put the part numbers in. All right, I'll do it now. Jeez, you are so picky. Okay, um, I just want to finish off this video with a bit of an advert, if you like, from one of my subscribers. Uh, I'm not going to tell you his name. Um, you'll have to contact me if you're interested in what he is selling. He has recently bought um, a very old engineering shop. Uh, and when I say very old, it used to make parts for mosquito um, airplanes in World War II. Now it's not a huge shop but there are a fair few machines there. Um, lathes, presses, milling machines, uh, maybe the odd welder, TIG, um, I'm not sure. And later on I will be producing a video that he will send me of the equipment that is there he would initially love someone to buy it all an engineering shop that needs it a school something like that but he is also willing to entertain individual purchases in order for him not to be inundated with crap you send me an email and tell me what you might be interested in and no, I don't have a definitive list of the equipment. So if you're someone that is interested in engineering equipment, then let me know and I will let him know and then he will contact you if he thinks it's worthwhile and you're not just a scam artist. Now, some of these machines are probably worth thousands and thousands of pounds. I don't know. I have no clue as to the value or what they are. Okay, if you're interested in some very old but very good machine equipment, 
Machine equipment, that sounds really weird. But anyway, you know what I mean. Stuff that does metal. Then email me at gstargarage at gmail.com. And yes, it's coming up afterwards, but it's gstar with two R's, garage at gmail.com. Thanks.